This is a story about a trip a lifetime in the making. I've always dreamed of adventure in the mountains. The idea of being removed in a wild place for a short period of time amidst God's creation in a backcountry hunt is easy to romanticize when you grow up near the city, miles from dirt roads or a semblance of wilderness. I remember very vividly when I was maybe eight or nine sitting in the living room with my dad before church on Sundays watching hunting shows on TV. Jim Shockey. Everything you need to live on your back and nothing to do but witness God's handiwork, free of human impairment. A test of will. A break of monotony in exchange for uncertainty. The highs, lows, beauty and authenticity of submerging yourself in a solitary goal in a place that is designed by God to both astound and test you. The allure of that unique experience drew me. How much more authentic and adventurous of a lifestyle can there possibly be than that? Appalachia, a place of tattered history, rugged beauty, and intimate familiarity to those who call it home. Its mountains, once a frontier of colonial civilization, now stand meekly in the shadow of their western counterparts in the Rockies in the eyes of the hunting and outdoor industry. This land lies host to a certain way of life, a persevering spirit embodied in the individuals who inhabit it. As I said, I grew up in the city, but a few times a year my family would drag me out to a log cabin we owned in the Blue Ridge Mountains, learning to build a fire, fish, hike, read the landscape, and most of all, hunt. It took eight months of online scouting, researching, and cold calling phone numbers I found online to determine what piece of ground best suited us for that sort of opportunity. We were seeking a challenge on a wild, beautiful piece of ground. Since hunting trips of this nature are scarce in the Appalachians, so too is information regarding them. The dream was to find black bears, which just so happened to be found in places most folks don't care to wander or post online about. We would eventually settle on a piece in the Blue Ridge Mountains that granted exactly what we were looking for. Alright. We got bear tracks. Right here. In a flash, the entire trajectory of our mission changed. A bear in the snow at 4,000 feet in the Blue Ridge Mountains. 
It's hard not to glamorize how special of an experience that truly was. Months of research and effort come to a head. A bear, us idly by watching, trying our best not to muck up the opportunity that lie before us. It was nothing less than an absolute validation that this is where we needed to be. A month later, we came back, but things had changed. The snow had melted, giving way to spring, and the mountains had come alive. A little different this time of year. Um, we've seen three deer. How many deer have we seen so far? Three, four, five. Three, five? We haven't seen any bear sign, really, or any bears, but it's really kind of impossible to see any tracks. I mean, the ground's up hip high everywhere. Um, we just spotted a doe. Probably came within 30 yards. I mean, what do you think so far? Great hike, just thick, bro. <laughs> Dude, it's so, it's a whole different world. I, r I pray it's not like this in October, and it won't be. Well, we just got done uh, hiking down one of these long ridges. You know, you can look at Onyx all you want and sit at home and make all these plans, but until you really get your feet on the ground, you don't know what the terrain's gonna look like. And it was one of those places where you couldn't see but five to 10 feet in front of your face. And that is the challenge of being in the Appalachians, of being in the Blue Ridge Mountains, is it's a little bit different it's really hard to find clear ground where you can see and get clear shooting lanes. And that's the value in having these scouting trips. We're being met with the harsh realities of hunting in the mountains. <laughs> Get away from me. Um, we are looking for water. We came down what I can only describe as a cliff. And then here's what we're working with. A real steady stream. I mean, we're really killing the game. So... I don't know what that means for where we're going to camp at, but we'll just have to make do. Having fun. Jackson, you having fun? Hey, man. <laughs> the two follow-up trips granted us enough information and familiarity with the ground to ensure confidence when the time came. Five deer, two turkeys, and a bear, and two trips. Not half bad. The air is starting to cool. The leaves begin their shift to a warm color palette of reds and oranges. The wildlife sense the imminent presence of a cold winter and are on their feet feeding before time is up. It's fall and our day had come.
ahead and tell me what you're feeling. I'm feeling my legs, and my <laughs> shoulders, and there's not much else. <laughs> we just went, uh, I don't know, maybe a quarter of the way up. And I'm starting to realize that like a 60, 70 pound pack is indeed different. It weighs more than a, than a 40, than a 40 pound, pack. pound pack. Ain't no way, bro. No, I know. And it Ain't actually no is harder to carry that. And then when you have another bag on top of that, like we yeah. all do, and yeah. then you have one swinging on you like this one. <laughs> going up there. They follow you, lack. You sell that at community college. Oh. Jackson. I mean, here's the good news. It's a really good exercise, and by the end of this, our glutes are going to be so fire. My quad. Hey, buddy, my glutes are already fire. I didn't need this. That's a fair point. Mine aren't, though. I have negative behind, and I need this. But down here, I'm like... <laughs> Bro, let me tell you something. I'm running down it. I, I, I mean, I've struggled every time we've done this. You know, reasonably. He threw that, he, you threw that tent on there and I went, <laughs> and I looked up and y'all were gone, bro. I mean like. I feel like a llama dude or an alpaca. Yeah, you're Just, like, <laughs> what are they called uh, that help you hike Everest? Um, Sherpas, Sherpas? Yeah. yeah. We're like Sherpas right now. What'd you say? But we're just all Sherpas for each other. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever says. The Appalachian Mountains ain't nothing. They ain't that tough to hike. Those are hills. They ain't mountains. Clearly has not hiked in the Appalachian Mountains. That's all I got to say. Thank you. And that, folks, is why we came up here. So. As I grew older, I learned to appreciate the outdoors for not only its beauty, but its challenges. Though I felt my experience was always hindered by this looming sense that though my trips in the mountains were exciting, they were always preceded by the caveat that elsewhere stood real wilderness. What we experienced was in some way subpar or incomplete. Man, what would it be like to get a trip out west, I'd hear. Trips like that of Mr. Shockey, real adventures, were thought to be rare, if not impossible, in the Blue Ridge Mountains. It's not feasible out here. I guess I thought I'd be better off catching a plane ticket to the other side of the continent if adventure in rugged country was what I sought. Or at least that's what I was told. What I didn't know then that I wish I'd found out sooner was I was wrong. Did y'all think it was cold last night or? I was good. <laughs> I was, I kinda, I was good. a little bit cold. 
I brought a zero degree bag that weighed about 45 pounds, so it better have been warm because. I kept sliding over. <laughs> I woke up at one point, I was like 12 inches from the side of the tent. And I was like, huh. I know I my feet were on top of Carl and I was like, oh. Yeah, well, like, I was. Like an angle like <laughs> Let me tell you something. We're going to trade off those middle spots because half of the tent was hey, laying on my face no. all <laughs> night. I That's think fine. we should rotate. So I thought right, it was kind of cozy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm, Tyler slides over. Yeah. And we just keep. We can do that. So at the end, I'm on Jackson. <laughs> Y'all are stupid. We didn't even wake up to hunt in the morning because we were too zonked from yesterday. We went to sleep at like 9.30. <laughs> so, I feel like an absolute grandfather. And plus, how are you supposed to go hunt when you wake up to this?
40 chipmunks. <laughs> one ran right across the Dude, one literally came like from me to the tree right here. I was like, there was a, that whatever that bird was. I thought it was a turkey for a second. I thought I saw two turkeys. Uh, like, you can yeah. hear them clucking. Yeah, I thought it might have been what it was, but they came right over here in front of me and just like ran up the side. I want to finish out hiking the rest of this trail just to get it. Yeah. Make sure there's nothing we're missing. But. She was 20 yards just now. Dude. Hey. She was literally at this tree right here. Where'd you hit? Maybe 
right behind the lung. Okay. Not too far back, but not. But dude, she was walking like Could she was just like, just walking, bro. Yeah. Okay. 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 Still good stock. We'll see what happens. We'll go. We'll, we'll, we'll watch. Yeah. She was 25, and she kept walking. And finally, I just drew on her, and she stood there, and then I just. experience man really a real experience yeah people don't understand what it takes out of you to kill yeah. something yeah. yeah Grun, that's not the way you love to see it go down but at the end of the day I mean it's first bow kill that's big um, hunting is real this is a real part of connecting yourself back to the food chain I mean this is like what it actually looks like and people try to shy away from that first bow kill so it's big we're gonna get her broken down and then uh, get the pack out started. And we got a long one ahead of us, so we ought to get um, So we are almost at the end of this um, trail. Okay. And um, two does, we saw them through the woods, and I actually got a shot on one of them, and uh, she's dead. So. Let's go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna pack because I mean it's pretty it's a good ways away yeah, from camp. Yeah, and y'all don't know the and y'all don't know the yeah. trail all the way. So we're gonna get her like Skinner and everything, get her done, and then we'll be back at camp shortly. Sweet dude, heck yeah, I, I love it. <laughs> yeah, so we'll we'll be back. I mean it's four o'clock. It'll take us a little bit to get back, but we'll be back before dark. So. Sweet. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks, man. First kill. Yeah, yeah. All right, we'll see y'all in a little bit, okay? See ya. All right. With my gimp hand. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, baby. All right. We got uh, all the <laughs> the uh, copious amounts of meat with us now. About 80 pounds worth. <laughs> Probably about 150 pounds worth of meat gonna take us about six seven trips now that dough we got her cut up and butchered it took us a little bit um, Because it was a little bit uh, gut shot, but now we're gonna pack it out and we'll get out of here tonight We're gonna have a long night. We're gonna have to go all the way back Take down Tyler and Carl already have our camp taken down They're gonna meet us and we're gonna go down to the trucks and put this on ice um, So which is probably how far is that from here? The from truck, here. the truck from here, yeah, probably five miles, so yeah. six miles. <laughs> it's gonna be a good night. Mm. They, I hope they can they carry the whole the whole camp on their own. We're not gonna be able to. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Anyway, I don't know. We'll figure it out when we get there, but we'll check back in. The man of the hour. How we feel? I don't feel good now. <laughs> Still weighs something on the big deer, but it still feels like one. Jackson, how you doing? Good man, embracing the suck. <laughs> Looking David Goggins up front. I'm over here with half a lung. Alright. We made it. Congratulations. 
Thank you. We had a collapse long, but we got up here. We're gonna find a place to hang this meat for the night. We were going to go all the way back down to the truck and go get ice for the cooler, but that's dumb because my legs and all of our legs and lungs. So we're just gonna hang it up tonight. Now here's where the inexperience comes in. Because, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, we're going to wake up to a 600-pound bear just, like, chilling. <laughs> and one of us We is... thought it was fine. I don't know. I can't wait to blow up on YouTube. Yeah. An evening fire meant a taste test of Perkins deer, where we'd crowd around and reminisce while coyotes yipped in the distance. A first time backcountry experience. A first time setting camp on a mountain under fall foliage. A first bow kill. A day of first ends as the sun sets behind the blue ridge line. Thank you, Lord. We are on the way back down. We got camp packed up. We need to go get Jackson's deer on ice if we can. And go get to the truck. So it's about three miles, three and a half miles down. And then we're gonna go set up a new camp for tonight and tomorrow night uh, before we gotta get out of here. So we're gonna try and take a fairly easy day today, but see if we have enough time to get in the woods any and get some info on if there's any sign in the area uh, at the lower elevations where me and Jackson were not yesterday so whew, we'll find out and I'm gonna put this camera away so I don't die all right Jackson, we're back where we were in May. Looks a little different, doesn't it? Yeah. What the heck? This pack out is pretty brutal. And it's it's so weird with the weather. I mean, it's fall. I mean, it's 65 right now, feels like at least. And then it'll go down the 30s at night. So it's like you can't, you don't know what the heck to wear. But it's still pretty. But this just looks a heck of a lot different than it did three months ago, even three weeks ago when we were here last. But, one more day. Tomorrow is going to be the deciding factor. See what else happens. But beautiful country and grateful to be here anyway. So.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Woo. It's amazing that the first time we come up here, we're not gonna, we didn't think we were going to do that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was telling them when we were on the way up here, I was like, guys, just so you know, probably not going to see a bear. Maybe we'll see a deer. Probably not going to get a shot on one. First day, freaking spot and stalks a whitetail. Like, if I flip, if I flip my release onto my bow, I always tell people, I watch like Outdoor Channel and those guys like walk up on 160 inch whitetails like it's like it's nothing, like it's a dog. And every time I go hunting, you you know, you breathe wrong and they yeah. run off. And then the one time we go to video it, a whitetail walks up to you at 15, 20 yards <laughs> and we kill it. But I'm like, I don't know what to say, I'm just going to start filming more, but that's crazy. But feels good. It's a good pack out. It's a good day, baby. Hey Jack. Yep. Uh, what you got in your hands, boss? Hey, don't worry about all this. So I've been planning this hunt out for over a year, and I keep telling the guys, seriously, pack gloves. It's gonna be cold. The high is 43 on one day. And let's go down the line. Yeah. I have gloves. He does. He's from Florida. Yeah. He brought gloves. Yes. And Carl, do you have gloves? Carl has, of course I have Carl gloves. even brought batting gloves. <laughs> yes. Batting. And I have. That, it was up that much important. Gloves. gloves. And here we are. I got my wool socks on, and you know what? They do the job. I'm not complaining. It's all, and I forgot my heavy jacket, so I took this off Carl because I'm a bad person. And also, the day before, being the natural-born Daniel Boone that I am, I uh, cut my finger while sharp sharpening my broadheads, and uh, so now I haven't been able to really use my finger a whole lot. It's going to be a good day. So guys. now when we kill a Seriously bear, think, that's yeah. going to be even more impressive. <laughs> yeah,
tucked between these two mountains. Open forest with the, with the leaves falling, the sun beaming through was gorgeous. But these ridges, it's so fascinating to me. I've studied as best I can on Onyx and going on three scouting trips coming here. And then you come in person at a ridge you've never stepped on. It's like a perfect pathway. Trees cut out. scouting trips are, you know, as you've seen probably already, completely impassable. So, it's just funny, you kind of, goes to show that you need to go get boots on the ground, you need to go check out what you're looking at online, or else you'll never know what it's really going to look like. So, anyway, time to get breakfast. Are we good, are we good to As morning drifted to afternoon, it was soon time to make a trip down to retrieve ice for Perkins Deer before the hike for one last shot in our hunt. As we exited the property, we ran into a local hound hunter, an older gentleman looking for directions as his family had killed a bear nearby with hounds and he was looking to link up with them. After pointing him in the right direction, we asked if it would be okay if we tag along, film, and help retrieve the bear given it was back in the mountains ways. He, being the incredibly nice man that he was, promptly agreed. Another first. Yeah, they, the environment is more like a compound feel. It's more like Time to sit on. We got enough paper. <laughs> Big thank you to the family that allowed us to take part in their hunt that day. It was an incredible experience and we will not soon forget. Committed to harvesting a bear of our own in the mountains, Perkins and I set out for another five day hunt in mid-December during the bear rifle season, but were unfortunately cut short due to an unexpected nine inch snow that hammered the high Appalachians. Did we forget to check the weather thoroughly? Maybe. Though the trip was cut short, it still granted us enough time to set camp, build a fire, and reminisce on the hunting season that was. A great adventure indeed. To Jackson Perkins, congrats on your dear brother. You earned that thing, and I couldn't be happier for you. Till next year, my man. As the trip drew to a close, it got me thinking. What the Appalachian Mountains hold is unique. Allowing the marketing gimmicks of a nearly billion dollar industry dictate to you what is and isn't worth your time or your dime is ridiculous. I let it control my perceptions of where I grew up hunting for too long. The place is truly formidable. I tip my hat to those who have honed their skills in the hollers and peaks of Appalachia. It is truly, in many ways, the forgotten frontier. Appreciate where you are, where you came from, and most of all, who you're with. Those three may not be changing soon, and I believe God can use each and every one of us from anywhere, anytime. A life spent chasing the appeasement of others will be spent in vain. What experiences can you create from where you are, right now? The people matter more than the scenery. I couldn't have done this alone. The experiences shared in this trip taught each of us four guys that ventured lessons we couldn't unlearn if we tried. Maybe buy a pack, hiking can hurt, and pain bonds men. I appreciate each of these guys, Carl, Tyler, and Perkins, very much for trusting me to take them out in the middle of nowhere to get uncomfortable, build a fire, run around the mountains, and do something downright hard that many people wouldn't be willing to try. You boys are the best. Thank you. God is good and his promises are true. He's a lighthouse in the storm, and I don't mean to preach at you, but I certainly don't mind. Give the good book a read. Let me know what you think. A life in Christ is filled with love, sacrifice, and charity if lived biblically. Thank you. God bless. 
and I'll see you next year. I'm gonna say it's been a great trip, great experience to be out here, like Jackson said, would not trade it for anything. And all I'm saying to these bears, watch out, we're coming. Yeah, bro, yeah.